Well, welcome. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing uh, this Friday? Uh, I got to be honest, time kind of got away from me. <laughs> and I just I just finished mixing my paints and I haven't finished prepping my canvas. So I'm going to quickly put in my uh, push pins. But welcome, everyone. I've got my uh, it's a one of my panels here. It's a 16 by 20 that I'm going to be working on tonight. Uh, one of my custom made wood panels. But oh, geez. I thought I had plenty of time, and before you know it, it's showtime. So uh, welcome, everyone. Sharon is here. Hi, Sharon. Donna. Uh, Diane is here. Susan is here. Hey, Susan. Carla, LC. We've got a packed house. Pat is here. So welcome, everyone. So uh, I think it's going to be a fun demo tonight. I have, uh, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be combining two different techniques together uh, into one painting. Hopefully it turns out pretty cool. I kind of like the color palette I'm working with. It's kind of a neutralized, um, rather monochromatic palette. I'll show, you, I'll show you all the colors. I did a lot of mixing of custom colors and uh, I'm excited to see what happens. So um, as people join, I'm just gonna finish putting the uh, hooks or push pins in my canvas. Um, Tracy is here. Hey, Tracy, Monique has joined us. So, I've got my little awl and I'm gonna just make a little pilot hole in each corner. Maybe I'll use my giant push pins tonight. Those are pretty easy to uh, insert. I've got them right here, four of them. And I'll just push them right in the back. Give a little pressure. Well, I hope you had a great week, everyone. And, uh, we managed to do a little painting. So I've got, um, let's see, what else? Two more here. And then we'll be ready to go. So I apologize. Normally, I thought I had this prepped, but I didn't. I painted on that one. So I had to prep a new one. And there we go. Okay. Just like that. So I got my panel all ready to go. And uh, got to just check it for level. It's a little bit wobbly. That happens. I just pull out one of the push pins a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I think we're ready to go. Barbara is here. Donna is here. Hey, guys. So let me push this out of the way. Oh, I wanted to also show you uh, one quick thing. Maybe I'll do that a little later. Let's get going. So... Let me um, show you what kind of colors we're going to be working with. So I'll flip the camera over. And here we go. So let's see. That looks a little dark. That, that looks a little bit better. <clears throat> so I've got a base coat color. This is just a, just a gray. I mixed some white and a little bit of black to get just kind of a gray base coat. Nothing super fancy there. I've got silver. This is just artist loft silver straight out of the tube. The next color I have is a custom mixed green color. This is silver and a little bit of green gray. I love this color from Liquitex Basics. So those two colors mix together to create this rather interesting, it's very light, kind of subtle, but an interesting uh, green color. Right here, I've got just a metallic white uh, from Artist Loft here. I'm almost out of that tube, but straight metallic white. And in here, I've got two colors that I kind of played around with a little bit. Um, this one right here, I think it's a very cool color. It's a gold. There's gold from Artist Loft, bronze from Liquitex Basics, and silver in this particular color to get this very, um, it's kind of a brownish kind of champagne gold, but uh, I really like this color. It's kind of subtle. It's less, you know, striking than just straight gold. Um, it's not as dark as just regular bronze. So it's a mixture of these three metallics to get this very interesting uh, kind of a champagne gold color. And then I finally have a dark color. I always like to have at, at least one dark color. And this is the dark right here. This is Payne's Gray. 
And it's, a, it's kind of a new Payne's Gray for me. Um, it's from Blick Studio. It's Payne's Gray mixed with bronze. And I get a, it's a little bit of a purplish color, but it's a little more neutralized. It's not so blue as straight Payne's Gray would be. So it kind of fits right into this color palette of uh, more neutralized, more subtle colors. So I'm excited to see what happens with these. So we've got one dark, we've got one light, a white color. I'm always thinking about values, lights and darks of colors. So I want a light color, I want a dark color, and these three here are all middle values, uh, more towards the lighter side uh, than the darker side. So it's gonna be kind of a fun um, color scheme, I think. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna fill two cups right here, and I'm going to do a straight pour on one side of my panel, a flip cup on the bottom side of my panel, and we'll see what happens. So all with the same colors, and uh, I'll talk to you about how I'm gonna layer them as I do that, but it will it should give a, a very interesting uh, look, a different kind of look than just a single technique. So it's kind of a double technique pour we're gonna do, and I'm excited to see what happens. So uh, give me one second, I'm gonna, grab something and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I just wanted to share a painting with you. Uh, I did this painting, we did this in our membership the other night. Um, it's a, we did a lot of swipe paintings. So this is the dried result of one of the swipes we did. Um, this had a, lot, a very interesting color scheme, kind of a different glue mixture that I use uh, with silicone in it. We did torching, we did a lot of different uh, swipes and I just wanted to show uh, some of the members, what the uh, end result was. And um, I quite like it a lot. The cells kind of went a little crazier than I had initially thought, but that's kind of what happens with uh, the cell glue formula I use. But um, I think it turned out pretty darn cool. So um, I like that painting a lot. So let me uh, move this and we'll get on to a new one. All right. Oops, sorry, forgot to put my mic back in. All right, so let me uh, move some of these paints out of here, clear a path, and we'll get to layering our cup. So if you have any questions, by the way, um, don't, uh, don't hesitate to put them up in the comments and I will get to them as uh, soon as I can. So just checking real quick to see if there's anything in there. Uh, no, nope, nothing yet. So, all right. So let's get on with our layering of our cup. I got to put some gloves on, first of all. So for a 16 by 20, um, I have two different amounts of paint I normally use. If it was just a regular straight pour or a ring pour, I would use about 10 ounces of paint. Uh, if it was a regular flip cup, I'd use about 13 ounces of paint. But since we're kind of combining two techniques, um, I'm gonna kind of half that. So in my flip cup, I'm gonna use uh, six ounces of paint. And in my ring pour, I'm gonna use uh, five and a half. So just around, um, you know, 11 and a half um, ounces of paint. I think that will work good. Okay, here we go. Gloves are on, I am set. Let me layer my uh, ring, my straight pour cup first. And since we're doing a straight pour, we're gonna have a center and the center is gonna have, it's gonna be similar to like a ring pour, um, but I want to have the center, it's probably gonna be the center of interest because your eye is gonna be drawn to these uh, rings um, radiating 
inward. So I think I'm going to use the white first. And uh, that will end up being the center of the straight pour. So I'm going to assume that's going to be like my center of interest. So I'm going to use some white, put some white in there. And I'm using all the same colors in, all, in both of these cups. Um, I'm just going to vary the amounts of each color in them. Next up, I think I'm going to use, uh, what do I want to use? I think the silver next. Then I'm going to go with this green, this kind of silvery green color. And then the uh, this champagne kind of gold, and then the dark. That bronze Payne's gray mix. And then I think I'll just do another layer of the uh, same order. Normally I just do the like the floating layers, um, but I'm gonna, well, maybe I'll alter it up. I'm gonna change it. I'll go back to the champagne color. Then I'll go to the silver. Then I'll go to the dark. Of course, when you're layering your cups, you can do it in any order you like. And then I'll end with the, uh, the green. And that will be our straight pour cup ready to go. So I'm going to, I'll just put that right here for a second. Next up, let's layer our flip cup. And I think with the flip cup, I kind of want the opposite to happen. I want to start with the darker colors and then work up towards the lighter colors. So I'm just going to start with the with that dark blue, and that should be the you know last color to come out. Then I'm going to go to the uh, the gold or champagne gold. Then I'll go to the silver. Then I'll do some of the green and then some white. And maybe for the white, I'll do a bit of a high pour and kind of shoot that down into the center of the cup. That should create some interesting blending effects. And uh, then I'll go back to the, the dark. Of course, you could do high pours with other colors as well. And let's see here. A little bit of green, and then I'll do another high pour with the white. We'll see what happens with that. And then I need a little bit more. Let me go, I'll do a high pour with the dark. There we go. And so that is our six ounces. And uh, we've got our paints all layered in our two cups. So I'm gonna set these aside. And I'll move some of these paints out of the way. By the way, I'll, I'll, I'll list the uh, paints and the mixtures in the description of the replay if you want, are interested in giving any of these a try for yourself. And let's put on a base coat. This is just a gray. I mixed up um, just white and some black. I just wanted a more neutralized uh, base coat. And I got a chunk of something in here. Oof, big chunk, some kind of dried paint. And let's see. And we'll just spread this out. All right. Here we go. So almost done with this. This is probably the most boring part of the entire process, but it's an important one. And like always, I've got a little too much paint on there. So don't be afraid to take some off every single time. It's always the same. I always put on too much. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. And the base coat, I use it, it just helps the paint slide around when you're tilting and stretching. Um, there's other ways you could apply a base coat um, after the fact, after you pour the cup. This is just the way I like to do it best. 
There we go. So I'm going to put that back in there. Wipe my knife off. And I've got a lot of air bubbles in the base coat because I just mixed up that paint. So I'm going to torch it with my little torch just to pop the air bubbles. And uh, I got a question here from uh, Karen. And Karen is asking, hey, Brad, I noticed when you put your base coat on that it appears to be only a small amount of paint, or is it misleading because of the video? I think I use way too much paint in my base coat. Yeah. Um, for me, I just like a, a relatively thin layer. I like it to cover the entire canvas or in this case panel. Um, I don't pour on a real thick, uh, a super thick coat. Some people flood on, uh, you know, flood on a, a whole base coat and then they tilt the paint off. Um, I've done that. I think I just waste so much base coat. I prefer to just uh, spread it out with my palette knife works better for me. Either way works good, but um, if you use too much, uh, you, you could be left with um, such a thick layer of paint that uh, it could be prone to cracking or crazing. Um, so you want I want a base coat, but I don't want it really, really thick. So that's a great question, Karen. Um, yeah, I try maybe uh, just spreading it out thinly. Try to make it the thinnest coat you can without having the canvas show through. And uh, I think you'll be in good shape. So good question. And uh, Diane is asking, is it thinly mixed? Um, no, this is my regular formula. Sorry, I didn't mention that. This is a, a two to one ratio. It's two parts flow trial, one part paint, and then some water. Um, so you just get a slight mound when, the, when you mix it up and the paint drizzles off your stir stick into the cup of paint. So it's not very, very thin. It's, um, it's kind of a normal mixture. Norm, it's the normal mix I use for uh, flip cups, straight pours, ring pours, um, like a slight mound when the uh, paint drizzles in there. So nothing close to thin, as thin as like a Dutch pour or anything like that. All right. So let me torch this. A lot of these have popped already, but let me torch. I'll get the rest of them. There we go, just a quick one, quick torch. I think I see another chunk of something. Yep. So it's always great to have your little tweezers nearby because those little chunks can, can creep into your paint mixes. So, all right, first up, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip my, my flip cup. I'll just do it the old fashioned way. And I think I'm gonna go right about Right about you know one third of the way up or so into the canvas and flip it. It's a little messy. That's okay. I'll let it sit there. And uh, now with our ring pour cup um, or straight pour cup, I layered in this side. You could pour out of this side or you could pour out of the opposite side. I tend to pour out of the opposite side most often for straight pours. I find the results a little more pleasing. Uh, in my opinion. So I'm going to uh, pour, I'm going to uh, normally you'd go right in the center of the canvas. I'm going to go again about a third of the way up, right about here. And we'll see what happens. Here we go. So I just want a thin stream. And you can adjust the height of the cup. I'm getting a little closer uh, to my my surface. And you could, uh, this is just a straight pour. I like to do um, not alter the, the stream at all. You could put a little twirl in there. You could do like a wandering straight pour if you wanted to. I'm just kind of sticking with the, the, the standard. So I'm getting a little closer to the surface. Just altering. I'm just trying, concentrating on getting that thin stream. And we're getting close to the end of the cup. And here comes the metallic white.
let that kind of just drain out of there for a second. Then I'm going to tilt the cup back and capture that drip. There we go. Nice. So that looks good to me so far. We've got these, uh, all these rings and they're super compressed and those are going to open up when we start stretching. So let's move on to the flip cup now. And what do I want to do here? I might just tilt. Oh, I don't want the cup moving. I might just move that uh, straight pour down the canvas a little bit to give myself a little more room. And let's uh, pull our cup. Here we go. So we've got some interesting things happening. It looks like we got a bunch of cells forming already. And that kind of looks like there's silicone in there, which is weird because I didn't put any silicone in any of my paints. That's funny. But right here, all of these cells, you know, maybe it's just metallic, but those look very similar to silicone cells. I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, maybe they're just funky cells from the all the metallics. Metallics. Uh, help to generate a lot of cells. Um, but these look very suspicious to me, but we'll see what happens as we start tilting. I really love the center of our flip cup. Um, I think the high pour created some very interesting effects. We've got this huge band of green right here, which I'm not in love with right now, but um, we'll see what we can do about that. So let's go ahead and uh, stretch our uh, paint puddle a little bit. That's so what I like to do first is just expand kind of the paint puddle. Kind of move it around the canvas. I'm not worried too much about uh, anything happening in the with the paint. We'll unify this hopefully as we proceed. So let's see here. So that's, that's pretty cool. We've expanded our puddle. Now I'll kind of recenter the paint a little bit and we'll decide what we want to do. Um, I quite like this, what's happening right here. Um, kind of when tapping out the cup, we've got some interesting things happening. That's probably not going to stay, but uh, I have to decide which uh, corner to tilt off of first. And let's see here. I'm going to, I think, pour off of this corner up here. I'm going to flip it around. Um, I do like the color scheme a whole lot, though. So, so far, so good. I'm going to so tilt it off of the corner. I'm just moving the paint and... Uh, Once I cover that edge and corner, I just tilt back. It's interesting. I don't love you know, that, but we can always adjust that a little bit, perhaps. Um, it'll change as we, as we continue. I think I'm going to go tilt off of um, what do I want to do. Maybe the opposite corner here. And the, the whole, the whole um, my only goal at this stage is just to cover the canvas, the edges, the sides, and just uh, see how things are progressing. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm thinking about composition and things, but not overly worried about it at this stage. So we're going to lose some of these cool cells, but that's just kind of the way it goes. But we got a lot of them in there, so... Not too worried about that. So we've got that corner. Now things are starting to change and uh, look differently. That big gold band now is looking a whole lot more interesting because cells are happening in there. Cells are appearing and uh, we're getting more movement. So 
things are shaping up, I think. Let's see. Well, I think what I want to do, this is bothering me a lot. So I'm going to get rid of it before we proceed. Um, I don't like to have, I like to my corners to be a little more plain. But right here, we've got the white right next to the dark. It's There's too much happening. It draws the eye too much to that corner. So I'm going to tilt that off. That's really bugging me. So um, instead of waiting, I'm just going to do it now. So here we go. I don't want to lose all that white. So that makes me happy. And I think that created a little more interest. Let's go down here and tilt off this corner. Kind of like that dark, uh, the dark blue, the Payne's gray in that corner. So tilt it. Now I'm going to kind of recenter that and tilt it back towards the center here. All right. So we've got three down, one to go. That's a very interesting line. I like it. Now is the time when everyone tells me not to tilt off the negative space corner. And uh, so I've got a uh, question. Let me grab my mouse. Um, Gal8 has asked, can you describe why you chose one corner over the other? Um, well, when I began, I it was just pretty much arbitrary. Just any corner will do. Um, uh, so I tilted off, I think, this corner first, this one down here. Then I went to the opposite corner, and I did that just because I wanted to kind of break up that green line and get more of a diagonal, um, some kind of more diagonal orientation to the composition. I just didn't want a big green line like straight across the center of the canvas. And when you go uh, kind of diagonal corners, that can help shift things around. That's why I went um, to that opposite corner. Then I just went back to this top one because it bothered me that the dark um, corner we had, we got rid of that. Then I just moved down down to this one because uh, it was the next most logical one. I had a lot of paint kind of down here. And then now we're over here and we've got a question. Am I going to tilt off this corner or am I going to leave it? And our base coat paint kind of uh, blends right into the rest of our uh, color palette. So I hope that answers your question, though. That's a good one. And uh, let's see here. So I'm seeing a lot of leave it, leave it. Um, I think I'll leave it. I like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of my base coat. I'm just going to pour a little bit just to cover the, let that drizzle down the sides. I don't often leave a lot of negative space. So it's a little, I'm actually going to put a little more on here. And then I'll tilt a little bit just so I can kind of tilt that uh, paint down the sides. And then I'll tilt towards me. I kind of move that paint down there. And there we go. So I'm just touching up the edges. It's it's nice to do that at this stage before we proceed. Um, then you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, and it looks pretty good. All right, so now let me turn this. 
now we've got some other decisions to make. And uh, even though I'm, I want to save this corner, it might change just because we're going to tilt a little more. Um, so let me get this in the camera. And uh, so let's see. Oh, and LC has got a question. That's a good one. Um, is satin enamel in the white? And the answer is no. It's just um, metallic white. But uh, that's the white I'm using, which is the Artist Loft metallic white. I really like this white a lot. And it creates some beautiful cells. So it, it likes to generate cells all by itself because it's a metallic color. Um, and so, but there's no satin enamel. It's kind of a, has its own satin enamel look, um, but it's a fun color, fun paint to work with. So, all right, let's see here. So, oh, I'm glad I got it better in the uh, camera. So what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at now, I really like everything on here. The only th thing I'm not thrilled with is my the white uh, straight pour is all the way up in the corner here. I'd like to have kind of pulled this down into maybe like a into the thirds um, down here a little bit. So I think I'm going to tilt off. I'm going to try to move the paint down this way some, just to kind of move this down. I want to try to keep this corner. I really like what's happening over here. I just want to kind of expand this out. Just a bit. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's see what happens. So I'm holding this at a at an angle, and I'm just going to try to expand the paint. So far, so good. Just kind of shifting it here and there a little bit. There we go. I think I like that a lot better. And whenever I tilt off of a side, I like to tilt the opposite way just to kind of move the paint back into the, uh, kind of in, towards the center again. Otherwise, it can just continue to kind of run off on you if you don't kind of coax it back into the uh, painting. So there we go. And I think, I think I like it. I think that is a very cool painting. I love the color palette. Um, we've got a lot of interest. I'm going to wipe my fingers off. Um, and I think our, the biggest problem with having, at least the biggest problem I found when you're combining multiple cups together, um, they could be multiple flip cups or straight pours or ring pours is the border uh, between the two paint puddles. It, and it's always very noticeable usually. Um, so there's always a little bit of a trick to try to incorporate those two separate paint puddles together. In this case, I think it works out very nicely because um, all the rings are you know moving in this direction and just kind of blends right into our flip cup. So. Um, I didn't love it at first. I was wondering how I'm going to incorporate that green, but it just kind of worked itself out. So um, I think it I think it turned out great. And I've done a few of these paintings before, a straight pour and a flip cup. And uh, they're always very interesting just because they're so different, um, you know, in, in the effects that you get, the look of the painting. But then they also blend so well together because all of the paints are the same color. You're working with the same color palette. You just get some more interesting paintings, I think, when you can kind of blend a couple different techniques together. 
um, they sure look, they don't look like an ordinary, you know, straight pour or a flip cup or something like that. There's a lot more interest in variation, which I like a lot. So I think, I think I'm going to just leave it alone and uh, not touch it anymore. And that is uh, our demo. So let's see here. Actually, one thing I'll do, let me zoom out a little bit. And I'll, because I don't know how I'm going to orient this. Oops, wrong way. So I'm just going to turn it around and just take a look and see what it looks like. I'm kind of thinking I would like this more as a, a vertical instead of a horizontal. And I think that's a much, much more interesting you know, orientation, the vertical format. So I like that quite a lot. So that might be how I uh, hang this one. We'll see. So let me move this up just a hair. I'll flip back and then see if uh, there are any questions. And um, Donna has a noticed something and says, it looks like the negative space, there's a ripple in it. There is, I have to put a little drop of paint. Let me do that before I progress. Good eye, Donna. So right here, when I did that tilting before, there's a little bit of, um, it's like there was a ripple, looks somewhat like what Donna said. So what I'm gonna do is just take my finger and just kind of drop some paint in there. And we'll see if that evens itself out. It should, I'll keep an eye on it. But uh, when it dries, things like to flatten out a lot. So, oh, hey, cool. Let me go back here and, um, and I'll check for any questions you might have. I'm gonna wipe my hands off, all full of paint. So, so Lily is, um, said she missed the color palette, but she's ready to try it. I'm gonna put the colors in the description of the replay. So if you check it on YouTube, um, I'll put the color, the colors in there because it's all custom mixed stuff pretty much. Um, but I'll put all the, the different colors in there so you could check it out and try it in the uh, YouTube replay. And uh, all right. And someone else said there might be something in the paint. Um, just above where I touched up, it might look like, yeah, there, I, it might be. There is a, a slight, it's, it's not really something in the paint. It's um, just a little bit of black of color, but I will, um, I'll probably have to float a little more um, of the base coat on there and tilt it off a hair, but um, I'll do my best to, to work that out. The other great thing about a base coat or uh, about a negative space is if you if you can't get it perfectly look uh, can't get it to look perfectly when it's wet, you can always paint it when it's dry because it's a solid color. So if you have a an issue with it, like a little divot or something, you can let your painting dry. Then you can go back with a brush and actually paint it and uh, touch it up that way. Uh, only with with solid color though, with solid color base coats. So, all right. So I'm gonna check and see if there's any uh, questions that might've come in while I was pouring and tilting. Thanks for all the great comments though, everyone. I, I'm glad you uh, enjoyed this one. I think it was a fun one. Let's see. And, uh, and Diane is asking, um, is it easier using a board instead of a canvas? Uh, there are things that are easier about it. Uh, the thing I like best about a uh, working on a panel, and this is a cradled panel, so it's a birch, a birch wood panel with 
that's cradled, which means there are sides on it. It's very similar to like a gallery wrap canvas. Um, what I love most about it is it's a rigid surface. You don't have to worry about the canvas getting loose. Um, it, it'll always stay rigid um, no matter what, pretty much. And you don't have any canvas texture to deal with. Um, I love the smooth surface of a panel. Um, you can make canvases smooth as well. You just have to gesso them, sand them, gesso them, sand them to get a really smooth surface. And you can you know, replicate uh, kind of the result. But you're always going to have to deal with that um, uh, canvas becoming loose over time eventually. You can always tighten it. But um, I just love, I just really like panels a lot. Uh, and this is a, a custom one that I made um, uh, and that I, I really like working on. You can buy them as well. I think Blick sells them. Ampersand manufactures them. They're a big maker of panels. Um, uh, Cheap Joe's Art Stuff is another website online where you can get panels that are uh, pretty nice, that are relatively expensive if you, if you want to try working on them. And uh, But if you get a raw panel, you must prep it correctly. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a disaster. So if you have a raw wood panel, you have to uh, put on like two coats of a sealer, which is uh, Golden makes one, GAC 100, not the 800, but 100. It's designed to be as a uh, protective coating to seal panels. Uh, and then over that, you put gesso, like two coats of gesso, and then you're ready to go uh, to work on your panel. So, but I really like them a lot. Oh, great question, Diane. And yeah, let's see here, any other questions? Let me scroll down here. And LC um, has a question about colors. And color end with hue, what does it mean? Red versus red hue. Uh, this can be very confusing for a lot of people. Um, but hue, H-U-E, is another word for color. It just means color. So like a yellow hue basically means yellow color. Hue and color are interchangeable words, pretty much. Um, but it, it can be kind of confusing, but, you know, paint manufacturers uh, use hue. Um, it's more of a technical term instead of using color. But when you see a hue used on a paint tube, like you'll see cobalt red hue or um, cadmium blue or cadmium orange hue or cobalt blue hue. Um, what that means is those are... Um, those are man-made uh, paints. Uh, regular, like cobalt blue, regular, um, geez, the words come to me, words, uh, like cobalt blue, cadmium red, things like that. Those are natural pigments, like from the earth, but they're very expensive. And a lot of them are very toxic. Um, cadmiums are very toxic. Uh, cobalt is very toxic. They have heavy metals in them. So with all of our... Um, scientific know-how in chemistry stuff, um, you can now recreate the exact same pigments, but they're man-made pigments, so they're much safer. They don't have heavy metals in them, but uh, they're differentiated by the word hue. So when you see uh, cobalt blue hue, um, it just means it's a man-made version. And it's also, it means it's uh, more affordable because those other pigments are very expensive. Um, and uh, it's light fast as well, so you don't have to worry about it. It's not like a, it's not like an inferior version of the color. Uh, it's just a man-made version, um, and actually, uh, there's a lot of uh, desirable traits about that. So, hopefully, that uh, tells you what hue means. Um, it can be very confusing though, so don't don't be afraid of hue though. And uh, I got a question: Do you typically save some of your special mix paints? For touch-ups, normally I don't, because um, normally I don't touch up um, paintings because it's very difficult to do without looking like you touched it up. Because um, the problem with with pore painting, 
um, it's not really a problem. It's just an inherent trait ab about it is whenever you layer your cup and pour your paints out, they're all mixing and blending together and they're not the same color as your original paints. They're a little lighter, they're a little um, darker, they've blended uh, differently. So there's, you really don't have the same color anymore because they're all mixed together and they're all changed and altered slightly. Um, some of them will be the same. Like we you know, have a big field of the metallic white that we use, that will in general be the same. Um, I mentioned that about the gray, touching that up, just because that was the base coat color and it was a solid color and it didn't mix with any other colors. So that'll always remain the same. So um, that's why I mentioned that. When you're working with like a negative space um, painting like that, and you, um, it's, it's difficult to get a you know, very smooth, perfect negative space. But if you do have that color, you can touch it up. It's a lot easier than trying to touch up anything in the rest of the painting. Um, it's very difficult to do. So that's a great question though. Um, sometimes I do keep uh, my paints, my leftover paints. I always use them up for other paintings, but sometimes I will keep them and you could always use them to sign your painting with. Um, if you sign with a, like a, with a brush or something, you can use the same colors and the same paints and they blend in nicely with your, with your painting. And uh, Barbara is asking, uh, I make all my own panels, don't I? <laughs> yes, I do. And uh, I will make a video of that. It's going to be difficult to uh, show you exactly how I make mine because it, you, have a, you have to have a lot of equipment for that. But I'm, I'm working on a way of making a, a simpler version of something that I would work on um, that you could make at home with simple tools. Because I have a lot of power tools, I have saws and um, saws and routers, and uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into the panels. Um, but I have a like a wood shop, so because I do a lot of woodworking. But I'll come up with a, a simpler variation, uh, maybe a couple different types of panels you could make using either a, like a birch panel, or um, you could use masonite or a hardboard works well for the surface, and then you can put a frame around it. I'll I can show you how to do that. Uh, in the membership. So we'll get to that though. But that's a great question, Barbara. Uh, and Diane is asking, are they more than canvases? In general, yeah. Um, panels are not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, and you have to have them shipped. Um, they are, they can be, they can be quite expensive depending on the size. Um, but they're not, they're not too too bad. I mean, they're, you're never going to find a panel as 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 cheap as like the the bargain canvas packs or something like that. But they can be comparable to the the nicer gallery wrap canvases. So if you're if you're if you're used to working on a, like a, a nicer gallery wrap canvas, panels are not that much uh, different in pricing. But you do have to if if they are raw, you do have to prep them correctly, like I mentioned. And uh, all right. And Lily is asking, um, give us a paint mixing session sometime. Sure, we can do that. Um, uh, so we could talk about paint mixing. It's it's not there's not a huge scientific process to it. You do have to know uh, like some basic color theory. Um, but uh, but I mean it's not. When I mix custom colors, mostly what I'm doing is I want to neutralize the color, meaning um, I want to take it from a very bright, you know, vibrant color and make it more grayish or you know, dull it down to get it more neutralized. Um, I like to bright, uh, like lighten colors by adding white. You can darken colors by adding black. Um, so I, I never do anything really crazy with uh, color mixing, but we'll definitely. We could talk about it uh, in the membership for sure. That'd be a great, that'd be a great um, studio uh, chat that we would have. So great idea, Lily. And Barbara likes buying tools. I'll let you, I'll tell you everything I use and uh, you can go to town, <laughs> Barbara. That'd be awesome. All right. Um, and Diane is asking, uh, is there a theme this month? 
Um, yeah, in the membership we were doing swipe theme or we're doing swipes this month. Uh, this isn't a swipe. Normally I do do something different for the the Friday demos because you know members are invited, but there's other people here as well. So I don't I'm not strict about the same technique. But uh, we're doing swipes um, this month, and uh, we're having fun. There's a couple swipes behind me. This one right here is one I just did uh, this Wednesday, and it's dry. Um, it was an interesting swipe using a glue mixture with a lot of silicone in it. it turned out pretty cool. And uh, all right, so and then that's a swipe too on the other side of me, by the way. So we did a bunch of swipes. So, and uh, Karen is here, hey Karen. Um, all right, I don't see any other questions. Hey Nancy, Nancy just joined us. Nice to see you. So if you have any um, last minute questions, feel free to uh, throw them up in the uh, comments. And I think I got them all, I hope. If I miss them, you could, you could always uh, type it in again quickly if you want. All right, I don't see anything coming in. But, uh, oh, maybe something has come in, nope. All right, nothing new. I guess I've answered all the questions. That's wonderful. So, well, thanks for joining me, everyone. This was a fun one. Uh, something a little different um, that you might not have seen before, but uh, I think it's a, it's a fun color palette to work with. Um, I really like working with more neutralized, subtle color palettes. Um, this is very monochromatic. There's not a lot of color that's you know, blasting in the face. Um, everything is very kind of toned down, but um, but uh, I think it worked out nicely. So thanks so much for joining me, though, and uh, um, have a great weekend. There's Super Bowl on Sunday. Wow. So uh, just up the road in L.A. So but anyway, enjoy the Super Bowl. If you're going to watch, try some paintings. Uh, you could always post them in the Facebook group in the, the big acrylic pouring club group. I'd love to check out what you're doing. And uh, if, if you have any other questions, you could always uh, comment or message me or email me if you have um, like a like a burning desire or burning question. Uh, and then here's my email, by the way. You could always email me at brad at pouringstudio.com. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. And uh, I will uh, look forward to seeing you next week. So take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you again very soon.